Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in America's favorite pharmacist segment brought to you by Mary Ruth's Organics, we're chatting with the amazing Phil Cowley. Today, we're chatting all about the MTHFR and gene mutations. Now, as you know, Film is our pharmaceutical expert and regular contributor, and he's going to break it all down for us today. Now, the MTHFR gene provides instructions for your body to make the MTHFR protein, which helps your body process folate. Now, your body needs folate to make DNA and modify proteins. Today, we're going to cover the role of the MTHFR gene and why it's important to our health. How do MTFHR mutations affect the body's ability to process folate? And what are some common health issues associated with the MTHFR mutations? Welcoming now to the show is my amazing contributor and co-host, Phil Cowley. Welcome, superstar. Hey, Zen. How are you? I'm amazing. Let's get right to it now. So this is a trending topic. How are MTHFR mutations identified and what does testing involve, Phil? Well, the thing about it is you have a patient come in and they said, well, my fingers and hands are tingling and they've got ringing in my ears. And then you start talking to them. Have you had any problems having babies? Have you had any blood clots? And then you look at it and they're taking six or seven medications And in the last few years, people are saying, well, maybe there's not seven problems. Maybe there's just one problem. And now that they've got really simple tests for genetic tests, there's uh, GenMax. There's all sorts of ones that are online now for about $200. They're coming up and seeing that many of the people who have multi-problems, they're having a ton of reflux, their hair is falling out. They have all sorts of, like I said, tingling in the fingers. They're seeing low levels of depression and anxiety. They test them and they're finding a correlation between that and people that are carrying this genetic change that doesn't always show up. It only shows up at certain points. And so they think, well, maybe we don't need to treat seven things with seven pills. Maybe we can get to one. And that becomes a point where people are starting to use it and they're seeing such good results of decreasing all the symptoms that it's becoming a huge topic, whereas it used to be, well, this isn't such a big deal. Okay, great. So that's a very thorough, you know, explanation in terms of identifying and, and testing and whatnot. But let's chat recommendation of L-methylfolate. Uh, so L-methylfolate is often recommended because it is the bioactive form of folate, which is a B vitamin, and it's essential for DNA synthesis, repair, and methylation, which is a process important for cognitive function, cardiovascular health, and just so much more. So the recommendation is especially pertinent considering that up to 70% of people have variations in their MTHFR gene that can affect folate metabolism. So that said, up to 70% of people can't methylate fill. There have been mixed studies on the importance of the methylated folate. What dietary and lifestyle changes are recommended for people with the mutations and which supplement do you recommend? So the dietary supplements are the easiest because if you look to where the population that have the highest rate of this genetic abnormality, they all come from areas that are that eat a lot of seafood, a lot of leafy greens. And then we come here and we eat a lot of McDonald's and a lot of processed foods. And then so they didn't see it back when we ate all of the greens and all of the seafood. So you add seafood, lots of leafy greens. Brussels sprouts are really, really high in it, but I don't know who eats Brussels sprouts anymore. So, and then you have, (laughs) so you had all these things and now we we miss it. So if you've got a background that comes from European, so the European Union thinks that about 50% of individuals in the European Union need to have the L-methylfolate. They need to make sure they have the methylated folic acid because they're seeing that that little bit of missing folic acid you take folic acid and turn folic acid into folate it takes two steps chemically we have to break a double bond we have to add a part to it that takes two steps then you have to be able to methylate it which 50 percent of people from european background can't do that hispanics are maybe even higher than that so you look at those individuals and and we know we can't do it we've created this huge flux in fact they say that if you look in adults in america because the way that we how much folic acid we have we can't translate 70% of people in the United States have active folic acid, which by the way, is a completely man-made chemical. It doesn't exist in nature at all. And and they find it in their blood system and they still don't have enough of the methylfolate. 
So Mary Ruth, you take anybody made inside the United States or inside of a European Union comp uh, country, and you you add the methyl the methylated folate to it, and you automatically see all of these health effects get better by 10, 15 percent. Fascinating. And I love how you just broke that down. So uh, you said something extremely important. I'm not going to let it go. 70 percent of adults in the U.S. have folic acid at high concentrations found in their blood. Right. And we know this for a fact. What ram ramifications will this have? So they're trying to figure out what the ramification is because they found studies where they see higher correlations of, of what they call unmet metabolized folic acid syndrome, which is a brand new thing. So 1996 is when the FDA started putting folic acid in everything. And it was fantastic because we saw all of the birth defects drop by like 30% overnight by adding folic acid to all of our grains. But since 1996, we're starting to see high levels of unprocessed folic acid inside of almost every adult they look at, which is weird because... Like I said, folic acid does not exist in nature. And anytime we add something that didn't exist in nature and it's only been 30 years, the ramifications are still being looked at. In most cases, the CDC, most of them are saying we don't think there's a problem. But I've heard we don't think from officials so many times that my thought process is, is if you know that you have a problem because you have a 50-50 chance because you've got European background or a 50-50 chance because you're Hispanic, why we're adding more folic acid inside of our multivitamins and and any other di any other dietary makes me wonder is there going to be a problem we're like oh look at that there's this huge problem we weren't looking at and that to me is a big deal because if folic acid doesn't exist in nature and we're using it and we need it to it doesn't stay real stable to where you can throw it in grains um when we put it as folate I think that there'll be bigger ramifications. And right now we're seeing a little higher rates of gastric reflux. It's really hard on the liver. So if you have somebody who's already a heavy drinker and then we add more and they're not processing it, we have bigger right. issues with the liver. And then you're seeing cancer rates and cancer rates are really hard because when you take cancer, some cancers go up and some go down. So they're like, well, it doesn't really distinguish. But if we look at individual problems, we're seeing an increase. Yeah. And what's interesting is in 1996, the FDA required adding folic acid to grains and we know that this, like you said, had effects on on birth defects and the function of L-methylfolate, right? It plays a critical role in producing neurotransmitters, synthesizing DNA and assisting with cellular repair and methylation processes. So this is particularly important for individuals with MTFHR gene mutations who have a reduced ability to convert folic acid to its active form. And when you look, I know specifically for me, I was I discovered that I had a mutation during my pregnancy, but the MTFHR mutations, particularly the C677T variant has been associated with an increased risk of neural tube uh, defects in the fetus, such as spina bifida. Um, and and there's there's even another one. I think it's um, anencephaly. And it's believed to be due to impaired folate metabolism, which is critical for the proper development of the neural tube in early pregnancy. So everything, everything is interconnected. And right. that's the scary part, because this could lead to birth defects, if not tended to. Now, I have th this go th we could talk all on and on about the mutations here and it's specifically yeah. about the homocysteine levels because that's another thing to touch on but how do M mtfhr mutations interact with other genetic factors or health conditions like high rates of adhd and autism in the last two decades and an ever increasing and 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 an ever increasing worrying about the effects of man altered food what role does mtfhr have in this so, so when you take a synth to make to synthesize dopamine, we'll start there. We have to take tyrosine and we have to use the methyl part of the methylated folic acid. So that's important. So you have to remember that folic acid is like the UPS truck, the FedEx guy, whoever you want to say, and they're they're the ones that deliver what we need all the time. So when we don't have enough delivery, guys, it doesn't matter how much you're prepared. If you don't get your packages, it doesn't work. So we have to take that methylated group and we've got to use that with tyrosine to make dopamine. We have to use that methylated group with tryptophan to make serotonin. We have to use that group for wound repair. So especially with dopamine and, and tryptophan, we're finding that if you don't have enough serotonin, we don't have enough dopamine, the answer when you come to me, and, and there's lots of times is I'll give you an ADD medication, we'll synthetically, we'll just say it's fine, we don't need it. But we haven't looked at that underlying issue of why aren't we making this? And so what you find is that depressive people 
have a double chance of having it's twice as high to have the amount of of MTHFR variants inside of people that are depressed versus those who aren't. And then our answer was, well, let's just give you another pill instead of trying to look at the causation. The thing I found with people is they want to feel good about what they eat. They want to feel good about where their medications come from. They want to feel good about how they're treating it anymore. They don't want just it, the problem to go away because now they know if I take this, it goes away. But what happens in 10 years? So anybody who's dealing with those things don't come off of your medications. But if you start adding meth methylated folic acid, you see there's a study that was done for the company Deplin, and you saw a decrease in depressive symptoms by almost 30% by just changing the type of folic acid you have. And this is a, for me, it's a huge thing because as we alter our food more and more, we're coming up surprised that we have problems with our health and we're like, well, great, well, let's just alter it again. We'll fix it for everybody. And we're not looking at the patient asking, what can I do to help you? And, and when you talk about genetic testing and counseling, it's so important because, I mean, when I was pregnant, I discovered uh, this MTFHR mutation by Dr. Fader. But when you look at homocysteine levels, uh, you know, that the MTHF, MTHFR mutations can lead to elevated levels of homocysteine, which is an amino acid in the blood. And when folate levels are, are insufficient, very bad things happen. So high homo, uh, homocysteine levels have been linked to various pregnancy complications including uh, neural tube defects and preeclampsia. So it's extremely important to check this out. Now, of course, for women with a family history of pregnancy complications or known MTHFR mutations, I always say genetic counseling is going to provide very valuable insight and guidance, guidance on managing risks during pregnancy, which is at the end of the day, if you can manage those risks, you potentially save your life and the babies. And that's extremely important. Now let's, let's move on because we have about two minutes we, left. Yeah. Can we just talk two seconds? Cause we actually had the same problem with our infertility and that's where I got into this too, was we, we had our, we actually went through IVF with our second child twice. And we, when we went in with, there's a, there was a specialist in California by the name of Dr. Beers. And this was long enough ago that it was kind of a newer thing. And we went in there and we found out that my wife had had probably somewhere in the range of 30 miscarriages, but they were always early on and wow. that she was throwing clots every time that she had a miscarriage. And so he said, it's your folic acid. And so early, early on, we had this and we had no clue. And then we started looking at familial history with, with birth controls and with, with uh, miscarriages with pregnancy. And we started seeing this correlation of a higher rate in her family to having clots. So you have all these women who have this risk factor that's underlying and they want to get pregnant. But then when they get pregnant, it increases the chance of having clotting disorders. And they're like, well, it's only 10%. And I'm like, only 10%. That's like one out of 10 women could throw a clot that weren't. That's not an only in my world. Right. So we started digging into it. We struggled with infertility for six, seven years. We started treating her with folic acid and then treating her with uh, with some baby aspirin because of the clotting disorders. And boom, now we have too many kids. We should have stopped. But <laughs> but you know, you look at it and it's such a simple thing. Instead, we spent thousands and thousands of dollars on IVF, and nobody took the two hundred dollar test to say is this a problem until we had a specialist that we had to spend a ton in California from Utah to see. So I'm with you. Go get tested. If you have a problem, go find out the problem before they just start throwing stuff at you. Boom. You just saved a whole bunch of people, a whole lot of money. Um, exactly. <laughs> just all you have to do is test. Now we have like about a minute and a half left and I want to kind of talk about uh, where things are at. So when you talk about the research, right? Like what's the current state of research on MTHFR mutations that, it, I mean, it's expanded our understanding um, on their impact on health and key variants like we talked about, the C677T and the A1298C have been extensively studied for their roles in various conditions, including cardiovascular disease and pregnancy complications and certain cancers. I'm, I know for a fact re research is moving towards personalized medicine, acknowledging to your point that the impact of MTHFR mutations can vary greatly greatly among individuals. And this includes truly understanding how these mutations interact with other genetic factors like you so eloquently taught us today and life choices. So studies are really exploring what I found when I was researching this novel therapeutic strategies, including targeted nutritional interventions, like you mentioned, the folate supplementation and medications to manage conditions associated with MTFHR. But how 
should healthcare providers feel approach treatment and management for patients with these mutations? Because this is very complicated if you're not understanding the root causation. Right. Well, the nice thing about everything that is complicated is as many studies they're done. And then there's a lot of conflicting studies. For example, nobody will let us test on the pregnant babies to see whether or not they're going to die or not. For some reason, people don't like it when we test on them. I don't, I don't know if they're picky that way, I guess. Right. So we, all the studies we look are kind of older studies saying, well, it's only folic acid. That's what the studies say. My answer to all of that is, is that the number you can look at plasma levels of the methyl tetrahydrofolate and you'll see them increase substantially when you use a supplement that gives you methyl tetrahydrofolate. And so knowing that it will go up and that that can be metabolized by our body and that is a natural thing. In a lot of cases, the first thing I would tell people is it's the first supplement I would try. If you think 30% of the people could use it, the worst case is your body knows completely how to get rid of it and you're having any of those symptoms just by getting one good supplement which is inexpensive. Like I said, find something that's made in the United States or inside the European Union, someplace where you trust where it's made from. And like the Mary Ruth brand, try that. And my assumption is, is that people who need it will find that they feel better by 10, 15%. And it's the cheapest, easiest way to do it. And it doesn't make it nearly as complicated. Then when you feel better, go out there, dig into it and really get your teeth into it. I've just been inspired because here just before we talked about, you know, some of my symptoms where I'm having these night flash, these, these like night sweats and I wake up sweating and I'm by no means premenopausal and then waking up with high blood pressure. I haven't been taking folic acid like since I, my pregnancy since 2017. So maybe I need to go look at this and because I know I have the mutation and I know my levels were managed and fine during pregnancy, but I, I think I got too comfortable. And now with all of this talk, I'm feeling like that might be a root cause of some of the current issues I'm having. So thank you for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just really like the idea of giving people something that worst case scenario, you just urinate it out. So there's not a lot of risk to it. And I'm not going to say that it'll solve your problems, but I like things where people have a way to grab onto their help, try it themselves, figure something out, and they feel control. They feel like they have something that they have hope. And this gives it to them with little to, well, no risk, really, right. as long as you're taking the methylated folic acid. I love taking methylate folate because it just makes this easy test. Just try it for two weeks, see what happens, and then you're out what you paid for it, which is $20 or so. So there's not much things you can fix in your life to give you a little control that's less than $20. That's some great advice. We are out of time. Thank you so much, Phil. You're amazing. Well, thank you very much. You make it so easy. Everybody doesn't know how easy it is. You make it so easy, Zen. Thank you. I do my best. I do my best. Guys, a common misconception is that having an MTHFR mutation guarantees the development of serious health conditions. In reality, the risk is influenced by a combination of genetic, environmental, and lifestyle factors. Not all MTHFR mutations have cl clinical significance. Misinterpreting test results can lead to unnecessary anxiety and inappropriate treatments. Assuming that all individuals with MTHFR mutations require the same treatment approach is misleading. Personalized assessment is key in managing these mutations effectively. That was America's Favorite Pharmacist brought to you by Mary Ruth's Organics. That was our newest and weekly contributor, pharmaceutical expert, Phil Cowley. Goes by the handle, Phil's My Pharmacist. Do check him out on the gram and definitely get some vitamins and supplements directly from MaryRuthOrganics.com. You can check them out on the gram at Mary Ruth Organics. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Mary Ruth's Organics. Not all supplements are alike. Mary Ruth believes that making the best supplements means creating products that are only made out of the highest quality ingredients. They are non-GMO, plant-based, vegan, and they taste great. Mary Ruth's Organics assist in maintaining your health and aid your body on your way to wellness. For more information, go to MaryRuthOrganics.com and use the promo code PHIL20MRO for 30% discount off your first order. That's MaryRuthOrganics.com. 